I want to thank organizing committee. Well, we know that bacterial resistance, it is a real trouble around the world, but this is not the only cause of failure. There are some others which must be considered. It is because I would like to tell you all what we found in this work in our laboratory in Venezuela. Since the appearance of MRSA strains, the use of vancomycin has increased worldwide, mainly for the treatment of infections caused by this species. However, the species that had fierce resistance to vancomycin was not Staphylococcus, but Enterococcus. It took 28 years for the first resistance strain to appear. The range of resistance to glycopeptides evolved in combination with resistance to one glycopeptide or two, vancomycin and or tacoplanin, presenting different MICs and the expression of two types of peptidoglycan precursors, diala diala dilact or diala diala desert. These mechanisms are encoded by operons. 39 years later, Staphylococcus feels attacked and responds with an elegant and discrete mechanism called VISA. We used five vancomycins, two of India, vancosin and Celovan, two of Argentina, vancomas and Fada Pharma, and um, Berens from Mexico. To test these vancomycins, we just use certified strains, which we know they respond to vancomycins. We tested vancomycin susceptible strains as Ificalis, ATCC 29212, and Staphylococcus aureus, ATCC 29213, bad Bichalactamas producer. Also, Staphylococcus aureus, ATCC 2523, uh, uh, um, vancomycin and oxacillin uh, susceptible, and the strain, which is a uh, visa strain, Staphylococcus aureus mu50. We did the study at the request of the hospital's managing pharmacist due to the report of therapeutic failures by physicians from different worlds. To test vancomycin in vitro, we used agar dilution and micro dilution methods. We detect spectra of all vancomycins by FTIR and we evaluate by transmission electron microscopy each antibiotic. We couldn't use innovator vancomycin because since 25 years, it is not sold in Venezuela. To this study, we based on the code of ethic of the National Fund of Science, Technology and Innovation of Venezuela. We use adult male rats. Rats were inoculated under anesthesia with Enterococcus fecalis, ATCC 29212 strain, through the lateral uh, tail vein to produce experimental endocarditis. The control rat was, was sacrificed 48, uh, 48 hours after inoculation. For the remaining five rats, also inoculated with the bacteria, the treatment was applied for five days intramuscularly one rat for each vancomycin under study with a dose of 50 milligram per kilogram of body weight every 12 hours. Rats were sacrificed with an intramuscular injection of succinylcholine 50 uh, milligram per milliliter eight hours after the last dose of treatment using aseptic techniques. The chest was opened with a dissection team to extract the heart cut it into pieces and place it in, to incubate with BHI broth. After that time, the ability to each vancomycin to sterilize the heart was verified by counting colonies on plates. Colony counts were performed on each plate, amine was applied, and the CFU was calculated per gram of cardiac tissue. Experiments were performed in triplicate. In the MICs, vancomycin of all strains was within the range 
of the certified trains. By FTIR, we detect on the vancomycin spectra all the functional groups needed to write pharmacodynamics. And by team analysis, we detected polymorphisms of all vancomycins. Here, you can appreciate the polymorphisms of vancomycin. We know that a solid compound whose chemical composition is identical will have polymorphisms if two or more conformations are naturally obtained. This occurs due to the molecular reorganization. Vancomax and Fada Pharma Genetics had the lowest concentration. Here you can see 27 and 23 milligram. However, when estimating the number of molecules needed to bind peptidoglycan precursors based on CCL area, on vancomycin spectra, all the antibiotics in this story had complete molecules to achieve therapeutic success. as in fact occur in all in vitro tests with an inoculum of 0.5 McFarlane. All 1.5, 10 to 8 by 10, um, which is, has been 1.5 to 10 to 10 precursors of the peptidoglycan. Normally between 33 to 55 of vancomycin binds to plasma proteins Assuming that vancomycin binds 30%, it would be 70% free to bind peptidoglycan precursors. Still with that calculation, the generic vancomycin tested would have enough molecules to reach peptidoglycan precursors since 1.5 plus um, 10 to uh, 18 vancomycin molecules would be needed. For bacterial action of vancomycin, an amide group NH that bind to the carboxyls of the pentapeptide CO must be present. In the five vancomycins analyzed here, all the groups necessary for the correct pharmacodynamics were found. In fact, no difference between the five vancomycin was observed in all in vitro tests. But what happens in vivo? Do these vancomycins really have therapeutic equivalence? We have already shown that they do have pharmaceutical equivalence, but are they capable of eliminating the bacteria from the biofilm and saving the patient's life? We saw all the functional groups needed to the pharmacodynamic. If all the vancomycins work in vitro, the problem doesn't come from the lack of any functional group because in their absence, the pharmacodynamics would be broken. Why in vivo they don't work? It is estimated that in one vancomycin treatment for every 100 milligram per kilogram daily, there are one by 10 to 18 vancomycin molecules available to bind peptidoglycan precursors. In the event that there is an infection by visa strains, the bacterium will produce diala diala pentapeptides and diala diala dipeptides. They will be released into the external medium to trap the vancomycin present in the medium, while the cell wall continues to form without vancomycin interference. In such infection, there will be 10 to 6. Um, diala diala dipeptides and between 10 to 3 to 10 to 4 diala diala pentapeptides but to neutralize 10 to 12 to 10 to 13 peptidoglycan precursors only 10 to 3 vancomycin molecules are needed all the antibiotics tested here had 10 to 18 vancomycin molecules This is what a visa strain looks like, surrounded by diala diala dipeptides, like a cloud of vancomycin and dipeptides. And in the middle, it is living 
without it being affected by antibiotic in the env environment. This kind of resistant method consume more vancomycin molecules than the van operons strains. But even testing this strain, we had in vitro effectiveness. Vancomycin has an asparagine molecule which establishes a peptide bond of the H of one of the amide groups with the alanine carboxyl, the target of the bacterium, forming a covalent bond. Alanine is a hydrophobic amino acid which creates a hydrophobic interaction and the variation is entropy cause changes in the peptide folding, which is why the theory that the therapeutic failure of Vancomax and Fada Pharma takes weight due to problems in pharmacodynamics due to its polyformis, clearly evidenced by transmission electron microscopy and not due to the absence of any essential functional group for interaction with the bacterial target site. Inner molecular interactions are modified by physical changes in matrix, directly influencing enthalpy and entropy with a direct effect of the physicochemical properties of the antibiotics. Rats treated with vancosine, celovan, and berens sterilized the heart. There was no growth on the infecting strain, which was the control on the rat, which didn't receive antibiotic treatment. The polymorphism of the Vancomax and Fada Pharma particles interfered with the pharma pharmacodynamics of the antibiotic due to, due to the inner fascial tension, the surface area, and the morphology generated changes in the enthalpy and entropy of the antibiotic in vivo, being in a different biological matrix. These two last antibiotics were successful in vitro, but not in vivo. They are come from Argentina. It is well documented that there are properties that are changed due to the polymorphism of the active ingredient in medications. Among these properties are the dissolution rate and the stability of the drug, chemical and photochemical reactivity, which affects the pharmacokinetics of the medicine, and on the other hand, the inner fascial tension, the surface area, and the energy-free surface. Morphology of the particles modify the pharmacodynamics of the drug. The changes generate disorders in the enthalpy and entropy of the drugs. We can think that vancomycin failure could be due to nutrient restriction because an endocarditis, it is an infection based on biofilm, so bacteria couldn't develop well as in vitro assay. Due to first restriction, bacteria growth rate decreases also because bacteria have to adapt to stress conditions. But all rats were treated at the same way and three vancomycin sterilized heart. What could be happening then? Vesga and his colleagues are a strong vancomycin research group in Colombia. He also showed that there is no difference between genetic and innovator vancomycins. Genetic vancomycin products fail in vivo despite being pharmaceutical equivalents of the innovator. Genetic antibiotics can contain contaminated particles, causing damage to the microcirculation of critically ill patients, causing multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. The microcirculatory dysfunction caused by ischemia brings about the de deterioration of the patient and is not precisely due to pharmacodynamic failure. A study carried out with different genetic cefotaxime showed the presence of foreign particles retained on a filter membrane. These contaminating generic particles are heterogeneous population that can range from elongated to a small vents or spherical fevers. Intravenous injection of, the, of these particles compromises blood microcirculation, 
demonstrated by histological analysis of capillary lumens with embedded particles. We should do more experiments to demonstrate this. The, the products of crystal degradation occur by the amination of the amino acid asparagin from the structure of vancomycin. This transformation is accelerated in the presence of alkaline pH and high temperatures, resulting in changes in the solubility of the molecule and therefore in, in a relationship with the peptidoglycan precursors of bacteria. The hypothesis is that impurities act as antagonists, managing to affect the potency and effectiveness of the antibiotic. There is no extrapolation from the in vitro and in vivo assays due to the variation of the biological matrix, since in vitro vancomycin is constituted in water and exposed to the bacteria alone, while in vivo the serum is present and there are many factors that come into play that are not interfering with the petri dishes. We demonstrate that there are all the functional groups necessary for the correct pharmacodynamics. Genetic failure is due to physical chemical changes in intermolecular interactions in vivo. The polymorphisms of Vancomax and Fada Pharma particles interfere with the pharmacodynamics of the antibiotic because the interfacial tension, the surface area, and the morphology generated changes in the enthalpy and entropy of the antibiotic in vivo since it was a different biological matrix. I hope it was of your interest. Just to finish, I want to thank all the people who work with me in this study, Beatriz 